What is up guys, it's Jesse here. What's up guys, guys? Thank you for checking up again. So as you guys can see, we have the IS300 in the garage. We're actually gonna be installing the sway bars that we did the unboxing to. So we're gonna go ahead and install those and then in the next few days, we're actually gonna be installing the short shifter on this thing. It's still taken apart. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and start jacking it up and we'll show you what you need, what tools you need and yeah, the basic uh, walkthrough of how to install these. It's gonna be pretty simple. It's only a few bolts, so. Four it, bolts if I'm... Yeah. Uh, yeah, for connecting the... This Both is that in the bottom ones, I guess, in the bottom ones. Dan links. Yeah. But it should be fine. We'll show you guys what to do. A helpful tip, uh, if you want to preserve the pinch holes on your IS300, this is a great product. Uh, this is actually meant specifically, I think, for the IS300. A company called Figs Engineering actually sells this. I believe it's like $25, if I'm not mistaken. But if you don't want to end up with pinch holes as so, let me show you. As those type of pinch holes. If you don't want to have those type of pinch holes, it's a great investment. I personally bought this one for my own IS300 because I didn't want to have that same problem, but that's just a helpful tip. I, I'll link this in the description. And again, this is not a paid sponsorship. So this is what Gus deals with since he doesn't drive his IS300 often. Oh, damn. The spiders like to make it home and he's currently battling Black Widows to be, to be exact. But yeah, they like to hang out in all his parts. As you can see, you can kind of get a shot of his parts. There goes arms, his coilovers, this badass exhaust right there. My stomach growling because I'm hungry. Starting here in the rear, uh, the tools you need to take out the rear sway bar are a ratchet of your choice. We are using a half inch drive with a 12, a 12 millimeter socket and we are using a 17 millimeter wrench and a 3 16 Allen wrench. Uh, this might not be the right choice for the job, uh, it actually might be a metric number, but for the case, we have this and it will do the job. So he's gonna go ahead and show you the brackets and bolts you need to take out, and then I'll show you the other side. So these two are 12s right here, and then this one that's connected to the end link is a 17. You'll need to connect the Allen wrench to it and then the 17 to undo it, and then he'll show you the other side over there. It's the same deal right here. This is the nut right here. And then you have to remove these brackets right here holding the sway bar. There's four in total, two on each side. So that's the old one right there compared to the new one. It looks about the, well, not the same length, but this was adjustable and that one's not. So I guess it's the difference. So once you are ready to start reinstalling your sway bar. You want to go ahead and grease up the lube in the inside, I mean, the bushing with lube in the inside to prevent any squealing from happening. Uh, you just want to be generous with that just to prevent any squealing, but it won't it won't affect any in any way in like performance. So that should be fine. We're going to go ahead and finish that up and then we're going to install, install the sway bar and we'll show you guys how. So if you want to be lazy and not pick up your rear section of your exhaust, you're gonna have to finagle the sway bar into place. All right guys, as, as you guys can see, we have the sway bar in place. Uh, we found it easier to uh, actually put this side in first and then work your way to the other side. After you put it in here, we actually uh, pre-mounted these brackets in. Uh, we didn't actually put any actual pressure on them, but just put them a little, we screwed them in a little just to have enough plate to be able to put them on that side but as you guys can see he'll show you on that side yeah we put them here too tighten all up tighten this one up too and yeah i mean now we're just gonna work our way to the front one it's down here it's the same exact thing as the rear uh the tools you need are a 17 millimeter wrench Accompanied by a 12 millimeter socket and a ratchet just to get these brackets out or these bolts out to these brackets. But this is the same exact deal. Um, it's kind of dark out here, but same exact deal. Last night? No, it's fine. Guess is over there finishing up taking out the sway bar end link. The sway bar. After he's done there, 
It should be straightforward. We'll show you guys the difference between the old sway bar and the new one. Here we have a little comparison of the old bar next to the new bar. Uh, there's a very significant amount of difference between the weight of each bar. Uh, I'm not quite sure how much the one on the right, the black one weighs. I want to say probably about 10 pounds. The one on the left is easily 15, 20 pounds. Super heavy. But uh, it was actually a pain in the ass to get that bar out. Um, there's a certain way you got to finagle it out of uh, its way because there's a uh, power steering. No, not a power steering. Uh, for the AC, there's a line. This line right here. It gets in the way, so you got to really finagle it to get it out. But we got it out. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get that bar back in. As you guys can see, we got the front sway bar in. Oh, it's over there. The hardest part about this sway bar was this right here, which is, I think, to the AC, to line, and it like makes it impossible. Not impossible, but just makes it really hard to fit it in and put it into over there. So in order to really like fit it comfortably, we had to take off the fender wheel which goes to here and once that comes out it's like a lot of space that it frees up here so you're able to put it in there so we got that we tighten up all the bolts and yeah so happy we're done and i'm stoked the way it looks 